Hi, during these trying times of the pandemic, the City of Columbia Parks and Recreation Department realizes that choices can be limited in enhancing one's physical, social, and mental well-being. The Parks and Recreation staff have been involved in developing a number of videos in which citizens can participate in and enjoy in the privacy of their own home. These videos consist of arts and crafts, gardening, physical activity, and sports instruction, with many more to come as we work through this pandemic. Our videos will be available to you on a number of our social media outlets. We hope you enjoy and thank you very much. Greetings, my name is Dr. Jermon Mama Jean Miller and I am a program coordinator for the City of Columbia Department of Parks and Recreation. And my name is Courtney and I'm a park specialist at Catherine M. Bell Culture Arts. And we are here today to share with you a little bit of a backstory about martial arts and ballet. ballet. A lot of people don't realize that one evolved from the other. See, before cell phones and the internet, people traveled around to other countries and saw what people did, and then they brought it home with them. In the story of Cinderella, uh, she had what kind of slippers, Ms. Courtney? Glass slippers. Glass slippers. And the story originally with the glass slipper, believe it or not, came from China. But they weren't glass slippers. The word was there. And there in Chinese means fur. But when they went to France, when some people have actually got and they were retelling the story, Cinderella or the young woman had what kind of slippers was that? The glass slippers. The glass slippers because there in French means glass. So translation is very important in stories. So today we're going to look at martial arts and how it evolved into ballet. Um, first of all, we have what? What are we looking at? Chinese martial arts became ballet. Okay, and you'll probably say, no, that can't be true. Oh, yes it is. Um, the guy's name, the great emperor Kublai Khan, um, kind of got a hold of, I don't, I don't, his father let him stay in China, and Kublai Khan and Marco Polo he stayed there 20 years. And when it was time for him to go back, he said to Kublai Khan, may I take back some of the Chinese martial arts? Okay, now that, that's interesting because here's a fan. And everybody knows Chinese women, they use a fan. But in Chinese martial arts, it's used as defense so that the person can't be seen. So Marco Polo was allowed to leave and he went back, he went back to Italy and then gradually these martial artists, these Chinese martial artists got to France. And who was the guy? I think he was his what? Louis the Louis the 14th? Yeah. Louis, yeah, Louis the 14th Sun King. Yeah, he was the Sun King. He loved dancing. So when he saw the, uh, the uh, Chinese martial sciences, he went, oh, I can make that a dance. Miss Courtney, may we demonstrate some of the positions and how we went from the Chinese martial arts into ballet. As you can see, Miss Courtney is standing in first position. I'm standing in first position also, but I'm going to change mine to Chinese martial arts. So the only difference that Louis the 16th did was he changed the hands and the feet. So rather than the feet going front, as you see the feet are side to side. Miss Courtney, may we bend our knees. Now we have a horse stance in Chinese martial arts and we have a demi plie in ballet. Same thing, nothing has changed. In fact, the first ballet dancers that Louis the 14th had were men. They didn't talk about that too much. The women didn't come right in the beginning. Now, Miss Courtney, can you go out to second position, please? And can you bend your knees? Now, this is second position, but I'm going to make it 
Chinese horse dance. So now I'm in a whole different concept. So remember, it came from China because of Marco Polo into Italy, into France, Louis XIV. Ready? Now, may we see a nice ballet, point on arms up, and now I'm going to make this Chinese martial arts. So it's almost identical except the hands and the feet were changed. All right, and we're going to the face front. Thank you. So as we look at history, so how did women get in to ballet? Miss Courtney, what happened? Who came along? Maria Tagliani. Oh my gosh, Marie Tagliani. See, the backstory with that is that her dad, he was so excited when his wife was gonna have a baby. And instead of having the boy that he could teach ballet to, who did he have? He had a little girl, he had a daughter. So this was difficult because now he had to teach her differently. And so I'm going to, this is twin, I always talk about this being twin sisters. And I'm going to sit right here. And we, we're even going to uh, look at some of the things here now. Miss Courtney knows the secret of these shoes because she's a dancer. When we talk, there's a ballet fan and a Chinese martial arts fan. Now, women, Mr. Taglioni, had to make sure that his daughter was totally different from the guy. Courtney, I have here 
pictures of what Mama G looked like doing Chinese what? And Marshall. And the twin sisters, martial arts and ballet. And if you look over here, this is the actual outfit that I was in the Nutcracker Suite with many years ago. So ballet lasts forever, martial arts lasts forever, and uh, we just want to thank everybody for listening. So where did ballet come from? Who was the king? Who was that king? I think it was Louis the 14th? Yeah. And he was the who? The sun king. The sun king. And he loved to dance, but originally it started in Chinese martial arts. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a good one.